Welcome back. It's been a little while since we talked, so today we got a lot of stuff to cover. Mainly this kiln and what it's like to build with green lumber. Everything we're going to cover today is because of you. A lot of these topics that I'm going to try to answer are all questions that you have asked and some that you haven't, just that I think are interesting. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, oh, got a bug. As always, thanks for watching, but if you're new, uh, there's something that just has to be stated again. We're off the grid here. No power, no running water, and no internet access. So, um, really uploading videos on a regular basis is extremely difficult, and answering questions in real time is even more difficult. So, again, we're gonna try to answer a whole lot of questions that some of you, or a lot of you, have asked about this kiln and about building with green lumber. Because our internet access up here is non-existent and videos are pretty difficult for us to upload, more bugs, we're gonna skip showing the final construction phase of this. I don't think anyone needs to see us shoving insulation into the walls or hanging doors and solar panels and fans and all that kind of stuff. Because we'll cover all that stuff as we get into the kiln. Let's jump into it and get started. So, this is the solar kiln. Probably the most important thing we should talk about first is what it's for, because a lot of people don't seem to understand what the kiln is used for. By and large, it's to dry lumber quickly, or more quickly than it would be if we just dried lumber outside in the air and let nature take its course. So as many of you know, we're taking trees off our own land, milling them on our own sawmill, turning it into lumber, and using that lumber to build our house. That stuff is wet. As it dries, lumber does funny things. It twists and turns and warps and cracks. And uh, by drying it in the kiln in a semi-controlled fashion, that is gonna help mitigate some of the warping and twisting and cracking and all sorts of things. Plus a whole lot more benefits than just letting things air dry. I don't wanna to get too far into the weeds with all this stuff. So we're just gonna cover the basics, but the moisture content of the stuff we're milling comes off the mill depending on the log somewhere between 20 and 25 percent moisture content which is pretty wet heavy wood if we let that stuff air dry it's taking about six weeks to get down to comparable to lumber you'd buy in the like say home depot or lowe's or something like that kiln dried lumber in the store on average is somewhere between 14 and 19 percent moisture content on average so uh, six weeks is really, it's not terribly long, but it's long enough where if we're trying to build a house speedily, six weeks to wait for a batch of lumber is you know, kind of a long time. The couple of batches we've done in the kiln took about a week. So it speeds up the drying process a whole lot, which makes turning our own trees into lumber and using them to build right away more of a feasible solution. I should say that um, right now we really are focused on framing lumber since that's the stage of the house we're in. And what we're using for framing is Douglas fir. Douglas fir is going to take a different amount of time than say hardwoods or pine or something like that. Once the framing lumber is all done we'll be moving on to birch. Uh, we've got some alder and a whole bunch of pine that we'll be milling and putting in the kiln. But we'll cover all that stuff when we get there. And another couple of the big benefits with a kiln. One is it kills bugs. If you get this lumber up to about 135, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it kills bugs. I hate bugs, which is sort of strange because we live in the woods. There's bugs everywhere. In this area, there's a bark beetle problem which bores into wood and does all sorts of nasty things. This kiln kills them. Uh, the other big thing that I don't think a lot of people think about is that this lumber, this is all Douglas fir that we're using to build, it's a pretty sappy wood and that sap will ooze out really forever if you don't kiln dry it. If we get the lumber in this kiln up to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, that solidifies the sap and it won't run and drip out like a horror flick with walls bleeding forever. So that's a big benefit to kiln drying the lumber. It solidifies the sap. But I think the last thing that really people probably don't think about is the weight and the human toll of working with wet wood. Wet wood is super heavy, but it comes out of the kiln nice and light and easy to manage. So as a guy who's in his mid-40s and at the moment feel like I'm about 80, 
Saving a little bit of my back with some drier lumber as we frame up this house is going to be a huge benefit. All right, let's load this thing up and um, then we'll go over how it works. So I should say that the kiln was not completely finished. It's fully functional, but not completely finished. Uh, we still have some interior paint, some interior trim work to do. But uh, even more importantly than that, we need to bring in some dirt and create a path for the tractor to be able to drive around and load directly into the kiln so we don't have to do it by hand. These doors are 12 and a half foot wide, or it's a 12 and a half foot wide opening. So in theory, we should be able to put a 12 foot stack of lumber on the forks and just drive them in instead of having to do it manually. That's pretty high on the to-do list at the moment because, uh, well, Stacking lumber is kind of a pain in the butt. Well, there's a good solid two days worth of milling stacked in the kiln. There's about 125 boards, everything from two by fours to two by sixes to two by eights, eight foot all the way up to 14 foot. So a big variety. For those of you wondering about the capacity of the kiln, it is 16 feet long by six foot wide and can handle about a three and a half foot tall stack of lumber. Uh, for good airflow, we want a solid foot of airspace around the stack of lumber, which means the overall usable capacity of this thing is about 1500 board feet. But since most people don't really understand what a board foot is, that works out to about 175 14 foot long 2x4s, which is a whole lot of lumber. So as we're stacking this lumber, we are using what are called stickers. They're basically just these little pieces of sticks, really, that we've milled into three quarter inch tall lengths of wood. Uh, they go in between all the rows of boards as we're putting them in the kiln, and that gives enough space for air to flow through the lumber and help the drying process. The solar kiln runs on two real main principles. One is heat, which is provided by the sun through the roof, like a greenhouse. And the second is airflow. We have two fans up in this baffle up here. They are run off the solar panel, which there's no thermostat, there's no switch, there's no nothing. Really, those fans start the second the sun hits the solar panel. It's pretty basic. We do have a thermostat we can wire in if the need arises, but just having ventilation and airflow is probably more important than really having them run off a thermostat, because airflow really helps with the drying process. And the last is really maybe not one of the basic principles, but it's weight on the ends to keep boards flat as they're drying. Obviously boards in the bottom of the stack, there's enough weight on them that they're gonna kind of hold their shape as they dry, but the ends of the upper stacks especially, we're gonna stack some cinder blocks on them to keep things locked into place and hopefully keep their shape. So now that the ends are weighted, the last thing we're doing is installing this tarp, which has a two-fold purpose. One is to keep direct sunlight off of the lumber. Secondly, and probably more importantly, is this tarp acts as a diverter for airflow. The sun beating down on the roof, that's pretty hot air up there. And those fans push that hot air down along the front of the tarp, down into the front of the stack, and that air comes through the stack and out the vents on top. On a hot day with a fresh batch of lumber in there, you can actually feel the steam and moisture coming out of the vents up there. It's, it's amazing, really, it's a miracle, it works. My guess is with the conditions we're gonna have for the next handful of days, this batch of lumber will be dry in between five and seven days. It's gonna be a hot, sunny few days. So this will get cooked fast. We'll pull it out and another batch will go in. Progress, a lot of progress. So. Now that this is all set up, all we gotta do is shut the doors and wait. So today is gonna be about a 75 degree day, um, bright sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. 
and temperatures inside of this kiln will get up into about 140, 145 degrees. It gets hot in there. I don't care who you are, that is hot. But even on a 60 degree day, it gets into low hundreds up in this kiln. So uh, that roof, it works. We can control heat and humidity slightly with a ventilation up on top. Those are just little sliders that um, we can open and close. There are screens to hopefully keep bugs out, but we can open and close those to control temperature and humidity somewhat. One of the things that's probably not on your typical solar kiln is this rain catchment system. Since we are off the grid and have not drilled a well yet, or really haven't been able to get one drilled, uh, we installed this rain catchment mainly so we have water to mill with. The mill uses a whole lot of water for cooling and lubrication, and uh, that's kind of difficult to have if we don't have a water source, but um, rain catchment, that does the trick pretty well. Now, under these tarps here, this is the last load that we took out of the kiln. Um, this lumber went in about the same moisture content. It was a, between 20 and 24 percent on average and uh, what came out is between 10 and 14 percent after about well it was seven days in there so dried it out pretty darn quick the stuff's ready to build i think the last thing i want to talk about is building with green lumber because we built this whole kiln with green lumber and um, how some of that lumber turned out in the end as it dried and maybe it'll give you sort of an example of why we're drying our own lumber in there so i should start by saying I don't consider myself to be the best carpenter in the world, but I'm halfway decent. I can make tight joints and I can make things fit and square and plumb. But lumber has a mind of its own as it dries. So this is a board and batten type siding. If you don't know your siding terms, this is the board, this is the batten. All the siding is uh, made out of pine that we milled green and put it up with really tight joints. But as the stuff dried out, things really shifted, spaces grew, and looked pretty funky in spots. But uh, that's the beauty of board and batten siding. This stuff was originated due to people having to build with green lumber back in the old days. So the boards went up, battens covered the seams, so when things would shrink, those seams would get hidden. So a lot of these joints that were tight when we put them in are now 3 8 to a half an inch opened up which as a carpenter is offensive really but that's what we got in the floor it's even worse some of the spots in the floor we've actually had to cut out bits of flooring and putting new pieces of flooring because they shrank so much that the ends of boards were actually off of the joists which you can't really have that so it's been a pretty interesting learning experience really to see how these boards shrank and twisted and move as they dried. Uh, but I will say they're very spe species specific on how things moved. Uh, we framed this all with Douglas fir that had fallen down in some windstorms and all that stuff. It shrank a little bit, but not terribly a lot. The pine, that's a whole nother story. Pine really moved a ton. So if you're gonna build with pine, uh, my suggestion is dry it first. Otherwise you're gonna be in for a rude awakening when it dries. All right, well, I think that's kind of it for this episode. For those of you following along with our progress here, we do have some pretty exciting things coming up. Uh, our foundation materials are finally gonna be here this coming week. They've been on order for months it seems like we've had the hole in the ground for a really long time but materials are finally going to show up this week so i think next episode should be us starting the foundation and then it'll be a house after that that's exciting stuff all right thanks for watching see you soon